Hey, Dan Meyer here, and I'm back for part two of tips to be a live stream rock star. So yesterday I talked about five tips, talked about how you should promote your live stream, how you should really understand your venue as far as your physical space you're broadcasting from, and how people are seeing you. What are they seeing when they look at your venue? Are they seeing what you have behind you? Is there something in, in between? Knowing your venue, knowing about the lighting, knowing about the sound quality, knowing about the props in the background, thinking about all that kind of stuff. I talked about how to make sure that you do a test run, that you do backup everything, that you be really cautious about making sure that you have contingency plans. For whatever goes wrong, be ready for it, right? And most importantly, have a wingman. Have somebody to spot for you. Have a VA that's with, their, with you during your live stream to engage in comments, to help you identify people that you should give shout outs to, to help prompt conversations, to really help in the flow. So you can focus on one thing. Your focus when you're going live is you should be thinking in that camera, I'm having a one-to-one -one conversation with everybody in my audience. And that is your priority. So everything else that happens around that should be somebody else to free you up to focus on delivering content, valuable content, to entertain, to educate, to engage, to empower your audience. That was the five tips in video number one that dropped before. So you can check that out if you haven't already. Otherwise, let's get into the next five tips. Um, basically, I'll talk about bandwidth first, right? Now, bandwidth is super important because bandwidth is basically like your speed people can see. And you wanna make sure that you're broadcasting from a location where you have a strong, consistent signal. I mentioned this before, but you don't wanna be in a situation where you start lagging, or even worse, your Wi-Fi drops. When you're doing that, it just is horrible, right? It's just a horrible experience. Yes, people will put up with it to some extent. Yeah, people expect it not to be perfect, but they're never gonna say, oh, I love that person, um, and I don't mind that they, they go lag. It's okay with me. They're gonna think in their head, you know, I can put up with it now, but if, if they don't fix the problem, I'm not gonna keep watching them if I'm gonna keep having to watch a blank screen or a frozen screen. So know your bandwidth, super important, right? The next thing I'll talk about really besides bandwidth is that you should really think about your lighting. Um, I mentioned this before, but this is super important. Natural lighting. I have a window right here that gets great daylight during the middle of the day. So I do most of my video recording um, during the middle of the day when I get the best lighting. If I'm going to go live, I try to, as much as possible, do it during daylight hours because I get better view of me in natural light. Um, it brings out the blue in my eyes. Um, it brings out the complexion of my skin. Um, when I'm at night and I have a light on me, I tend to have lighter skin and my eyes look gray. So I just look better with natural lighting. Most of us do think about that. Now, if you don't have natural lighting, invest in a couple um, ring lights, a couple lights that can put on your face. For example, I'll show you. See the difference? I have a ring light here on the side of my face that's not facing the window, right? So it gives a little balance to um, the light in the room. So I think about this all the time. On cloudy, rainy days, I have two ring lights, one on each side, right? So I make sure I get that, that effect. Um, a good ring light you can pay 20 bucks for, um, a, a nice one, probably 100 bucks for, go to Amazon, look it up, find the most popular one in your price range and get it. Um, if you're gonna broadcast from a phone or a gadget or a some kind of tablet, um, get the ring light with a little thing you can put on so that you can make sure that you uh, have a stable place to broadcast from. Some people do a lot of their lives walking, holding their phone, and that works for real short, hey, I'm doing this, come be part of this, join me for this, let's get involved in something. But if you're gonna broadcast for more than a minute or two and you're gonna be jumping around like this the whole time, you're probably gonna lose your audience. They're not gonna really watch it. They may like it, um, they may comment on it, but they probably don't watch the whole thing all the way through. Um, lighting is important, consistent lighting, and it's hard to get that when you're outside. Clouds, traffic, um, as you're moving around. So I don't personally think you should go live unless it's really your niche. If you're an outdoorsy person, if you're trying to always show outdoor activity, yeah, it's okay to be live outside. But for the most part, think about an indoor venue with great lighting. That's important. Great lighting and very limited sound interruptions. Those are super, super important. The next thing is that you want to make sure you interact with your viewers. And this is a challenge, right? You want to be able to educate and to entertain. My mentor, Bill Walsh, says you want to educate and entertain. And he calls it a, 
edutainment, I think, edutainment. And, and basically what he means is that, you know, you want to be able to be engaging. Now, I know that most people are going to look at my video and not watch the whole thing through because people just don't finish videos. So front load your most important content um, and make sure that when you're interacting with people, you, you front load it to get their engagement. You don't want to make them wait for the delivery. So if you're doing some kind of broadcast and you've got some surprise 10, 15 minutes down the road, move it up. You know, keep people interested and get them to raise your uh, awareness level um, for everyone on the stream by getting that engagement. Um, you want to make sure that you have a good plan. The last thing you should do is um, just have a PowerPoint and speak to it without your you there. If you just speak to a PowerPoint during a live stream, people are going to tune out right away. Um, even if you're talking into the camera the whole time, you want to try to mix, mix it up. Talking to the camera for more than a couple minutes, people get bored, they tune out. You wanna mix it. Like if you're seeing this right now, you see how when I make my videos, I go back and forth from my me talking to having visuals, PowerPoint slides and other visuals. Now I have a VA all, add all that after I record the raw video, but you can do some similar things when you're doing live streaming. Even if you're on Zoom, you can go back and forth from a PowerPoint to you, break up the monotony every once in a while, just so people aren't staring at the same thing for more than five minutes. That five minute mark is a killer, right? And you wanna interact with your viewers. And this is why it's so important to have a wingman. While you're focusing on the camera and you're imagining you're speaking to your audience and trying to have that eye contact engagement like you would if you were in a room with them, you wanna have somebody else paying attention to the chat, especially if you're using Zoom or any other type of live streaming app, there's gonna be a chat feature. And yeah, you can eyeball every once in a while, but you may miss things. You should have a VA that's monitoring that and engaging in that to make sure that the VA is calling up things that you need to hear about. You can even have the VA pop in audio wise to, you know, Give shout outs to key people that you want to acknowledge, uh, special people you want to thank, um, like the hosts or the, the coordinators. You want to make sure that you're just basically being interacting and you want to respect people's time, right? So you want to make it something that they're going to benefit from. So your, your live stream has to be engaging and you have to add value and that has to come through in an entertaining and engaging way. So um, interact with your viewers. And um, the next one, you know, don't be late. Think about when you want to live stream. This is so important. Most people make the mistake of live streaming when they have free time, not when their audience is, is bound to be on, and when their audience is bound to be in a situation they can actually watch a live stream. Now, yeah, we can save our live streams, and most people actually find that most of their live streaming, when they do a live stream, more people watch it in the replay for the save version than they do actually live stream itself. But if you really want to get into the place where you can get a good, engaged audience that is following you while you're live streaming, you really have to think about the time. When are people that you need to connect with, your audience, when are they likely to be in front of their computers or in front of their phones and have time to watch your live stream? Now, if you're going to speak for 15 minutes about you know, tips on, on what you can do with a virtual assistant, you want to think about when are people that you're trying to market are going to be doing that. For me, entrepreneurs and small business owners are people looking to set up a sideline business. They're probably going to be looking at their phones and surfing um, Facebook before lunch. Um, right after lunch, right at the end of the day, and after dinner. So I want to use one of those four windows to do my live stream if I'm trying to attract my clients, my ideal client, either engage current clients or look for new clients. I want to be mindful of when they're most likely to be online. Now, if I'm doing a live stream for my VAs that most of them live in the Philippines, it's the opposite. I got to be doing live streaming like at, you know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night in the Philippines. That's like seven o'clock in the morning for me, right? So I got a live stream early. So think about when you're gonna be on time. And when you set a time, when you pick a time, be on time. Never, ever, ever announce a time and be late. Respect people's time because if they're taking their time to stop what they're doing, to watch you when you're live, not when it's recorded, but when you're live, you gotta respect that. So be on time. And most importantly, I mentioned this yesterday, I'll finish it up with this one today. The most important tip I can give you for going live is having fun. People will keep following you, whether you do videos or Facebook Lives or you go and do a live streaming thing like on Twitch or Bego or whatever you're doing. You want to make sure you're having fun. You got to show people how your passion is being unlocked by you speaking to them through a camera. For me, this is a bit of a challenge, right? Because I love being in stage, on stage, in person. I love being in front of the room. That's my passion. I get my greatest joy when I'm sharing knowledge and interacting with people that want to learn from me and my experiences about what I'm talking about. That's the teacher in me. 
Um, having to do that on camera has been a challenge, but I try my best to be able to make what I do um, engaging for you, right? So that's why I move around a lot, why I raise my voice so I'm not just monotone, why I don't just speak to a PowerPoint slide, why I have my VA put a lot of visuals in to break it up. I'm thinking about what's fun for you to watch me as I have fun. It has to go both ways. It can't just be fun for the broadcaster. It has to be fun for the audience. And when you have that fun on both sides, then you have achieved rock star status when it comes to live streaming. So I hope that helped. You know, if you're still thinking about getting a virtual assistant to help your live streaming, reach out to us, SonicVA, S-O-N-I-C-V-A dot com. For less than 10 bucks an hour, we can get you started with a VA to help you manage your live streaming. If you're live streaming daily or even weekly, we can have them not just do the stuff around the live stream, but we can do a lot of pre-stream uh, promotional work. We can lay a lot of the groundwork. We can help you build backups. We can do post stuff where we take the live stream, we cut it and slice it into you know little sizzle reels or trailers. We can put it on YouTube for you. We can share it across social media. We can help you promote your live streaming if that's your key way to talk to your audience um, we can help build up an email list we can do calls to action we can try to get opt-ins anything you can think of that will help you be more successful with live streaming you should have a VA do most of it the one thing that you have to do is show up and deliver engaging content everything else is secondary for you it's important to be done it has to be done well, have a VA do most of that and let you focus on being the rock star, being the one that's focused on the camera and the audience behind it. That's the key to being a rock star live streamer. It's not being somebody who's just funny or charming or has a good message. Somebody who can focus on their audience. That's the key. That's my talk for today. Again, reach out to us if you have any questions. Drop a comment below, sonicva.com. Um, I want to thank you for your time, and I encourage you all to think about what other live streamers are doing, learn from them, apply these tips, and make sure that when you do live streaming, you're doing exactly what your audience needs. That's where you start. Thanks again for your time. Now go out there and have an awesome day.